and today I found out that my brewing is super super rusty. It's supposed to be a Kenya AA, it's supposed to be very sweet, very nice. The type of coffee that I like, the type of sweet, sour, acidic, fruity, a tea like coffee that I like, but my brewing messed up. It's because I've been not brewing for a long time now, so uh, oh well. What I do have with me here is the keys to a 2009 Bentley Brooklyn. Let me just finish up my coffee and talk about that very strange, very strange car right over there. A true collector's Bentley. This is the 2009 Bentley Brooklands. It's a gargantuan car, man. Look at it, it's almost three meters. No, three meters is too small for this car. Uh, I think the last, the last time I researched this car was around five meters long. And just look at the size in comparison with that tiny, also British or UK made uh, Mini Cooper and you got this gargantuan guy over here now the thing is with this car in the showroom compared to even the likes of the SVR over there it it makes the SVR look like ah, okay it's not that big of a car but actually it's huge look at the side profile of this car it's absolutely crazy massive Right, so some information about this car. Let's talk about it. This car houses Bentley's largest ever in production engine so far, clocking in at 6.75 liters, producing 530 horsepower. But that's not the most crazy part. The most crazy part is that it can produce up to 1050 newton meters of torque this is thanks to the twin turbo charging inside the car so now what is the Brooklands? why why does it exist I've, I've been asking myself the same question for the past two weeks that it's been here right I, I, I don't know what purpose it serves other than being super super cool right so uh, the Bentley Brooklands uh, was introduced to the world in 2007 and only in 2009 was it actually in production now during this time of course it has another variant or uh, a sibling it has a convertible top the Bentley Azure. So that is the convertible version of this car and this is the coupe version. As it was projected to launch in 2009, uh, the factory actually just commissioned 550 units to be made worldwide. And out of during that phase in time where the economic crisis was going on 2009, as it launched, the production never really saw the full figures uh, to be realized. What happened was that only 426 units were produced by Bentley in crew and only a hundred ish or so were in right hand drive. So yes, this is a true Bentley collector's item. And you can see it, it is something very special it is something very rare now looking at it like this it is of course a super gt it is a coupe it's two doors and it goes hand in hand with the current uh, continental gt but of course that is produced in much larger volumes compared to this very very limited 
uh, kind of car. And it's rumored that it takes 650 hours to produce a car like this. And the front is so very classic looking. It has, of course, the equal equal size. Is it equal size? No, the, the two inner ones are slightly larger. The two at the sides are slightly smaller. It has the four uh, headlights set up in front. Very circular, very round. It all just looks very, very stately. This, is, this feels like a limousine for like a town mayor or like for royalty this is that type of car right not any simpleton can jump into this car and make it work for them or, or add to their presence right so this is a car that carries a lot of heft in terms of prestige carries a lot of um, perceived reputation carries a lot of perceived power to the individual of course to match with the car and you can see here that it is Bentley's attempt to make a 3D flying bee normally when you see Bentley logos it's the it's the 2D flying bee with the bee wings at the side so this is their attempt to make a 3D one very similar-ish Okay, yeah, not very similar, but the wings kind of remind me of, of course, the Rolls Royce Spirit of Ecstasy. And you get a very large grille, very, very tall grille up in front. When we go on to the side, that is when this car just absolutely gets so menacing. Right? It's just how long and, and how precise, how straight the cut is from here over to the back. I have a slight hunch. It is an intense car. It's not something that I would admire or, or I actively look for or something that I would find. But yes, during release, uh, it was never officially released in Malaysia. So this unit was brought in by the previous owner from the UK. And this car, because it's been never really released in Malaysia, we do not have an actual uh, price amount for reference in terms of Malaysian Ringgit but in uh, the UK it was launched standard at 230,000 pounds without any additional accessories optioned and you can even option in carbon ceramic brakes for this car S so I've heard you can see the rear and that gives you sort of like the depth of this car and how long this car is you get the tail lights in this very flat kind of in this very flat kind of shape of course this all harkens back to the age where coupe cars were very very big and powerful and housed massive 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 engines inside so that of course you can cruise around nicely you can cruise around relatively in in opulent bentley fashion and comfort but when you need to this can absolutely sprint it has a record zero to 100 time of around five seconds some reports say 5.3 some reports say 5.1 and yeah it, it's kind of there because of course of the thousand newton meters of torque which is absolutely massive this engine can produce power and push the car up to a top speed of 294 kilometers per hour you get the 20 inch 20 inch rims at the side over here and it's a two-piece kind of rims so you can see the Bentley over here it's two piece and piece two piece over here Yep, something interesting. It is famous for its uh, abuse <laughs> by Jeremy Clarkson, of course, on the Top Gear show where they completely massacred the tires through the through churning out tons and tons and tons and tons of torque. Now, without further ado, let's move into the car. Wait, actually, before that, let me show you this. Right. There is on the key, there is no 
button to unlock the boot right there's no button here to unlock the boot it's only for the car doors so when the car is unlocked of course you can press a little button here you can see a little button here to unlock it but if the car is locked you need to flip this flying B over here up and use the manual key insert and unlock it through there some interesting thing over here bada bing bada boom there you go the car is unlocked and that is the interior the exterior is in onyx black and the interior is in this kind of tan kind of beige leather interior so yeah there you go that's the interior it is a full-size car right even though it's two doors i think you can really comfortably seat another two people at the back it's just the entry will be a little bit of a nuisance right so of course you also have the um what do you call it multi-function seats multi-way seats yes multi-way seats over here and of course you get the bentley brooklyn's plating on the side steps over here yep let's move inside Hmm, something I like. Look at the footrest. The footrest is just one metal thingy coming down with this. Yeah, it's quite nice. Um, a little bit over engineered, not necessary, but still a relatively nice feature. You get a lot of floating designs in this car, right? You see, that was sort of a floating footrest. And if you look at this handle over here, it is sort of uh, a floating design as well, but wrapped in this nice, nice leather. You got the wooden veneering over here. And of course, why wouldn't you have two? Yes, not one, but two. <laughs> two door handles. See, if I, if I put this one, this one flicks too. I'm gonna take this one. Yeah, that one opens up too. Of course, the door is super long, so any passenger at the back, they're able to sort of maneuver their way around and open the car door through this second one over here. So let's close it. And you can see total sound isolation. It kind of feels like I have an echo in here as well. And yeah. This is an interesting Bentley. It's like traveling back in time when you drive this car, right? When I drive this car, not when I drive it, but whoever drives this car, right? When they come out of the car, they step out of the car, I sort of imagine them in this flat cap, like the Peaky Blinders style, you know? Like the Peaky Blinders style flat cap with, with, a, with a, like, what do you call that? Pipe. Yeah, the tobacco pipe in their hands, they're just chewing on that and like smoking the other hand, having a single malt scotch whiskey. That, that's sort of what I imagine who, for whoever steps out of this car. It's an interesting car. So let's not start the engine because it's going to annoy all my, all my cafe customers. But let's slot the key in. Why oh, is it making this sound? Okay. Yep. And the steering will lower. The steering will lower and then you can see this is the driver zone of this car. Alternate charge. It needs to be charged a bit. Yep. So a lot of analog materials still in this car. Let's see if the lights work. No. Lights, lights. Oh, even the lights are like yellow already. Oh, dang. Okay, this is interesting. Okay, so you get a lot of analog features in this car still. It kind of feels like you're in an aeroplane uh, rather than a car. Yes, so these are all the analog uh, thingies over here. You get temperature, outside temperature, uh, the engine temperature, you get the fuel, you get time, as well as the oil 
gauge over there and of course this is still like milled from one solid piece of metal this one as well yeah totally just one solid nice fluid piece of metal and this is still very much so analog whereas the modern Bentleys have an electronic switch inside as you push it in it closes uh, electronically it operates it electronically this is still very much so analog where you just open up the valve opens and when it comes out it's much more instantaneous yeah signature Bentley stuffs this is very very interesting as well the radio controls um, infotainment system for CDs etc it, it has this it's housed in this little uh, very old style classic click to <laughs> send it back <laughs> oh my god it's like traveling back into a museum and checking out how Bentley work yeah this is this is just definitely very very interesting so this is the hand gear of course the engine's not on so nothing can work here yep and this is still all very oh that's a you okay this remote over here right this remote over here is to control the uh, infotainment system over here and of course uh, if you have a remote you know this is not a remote what am I talking about this is a telephone. Oh shoot. What is this? This is a telephone. Oh my gosh. Okay. Um yeah. I heard that there's a remote. Uh let me go find the remote. <laughs> this is so interesting. Ah, cigarette lighter and uh probably some place to put your coins. Why is there a double flipping switch thingy? I'm so confused by this car. You can start the engine here apparently. And these are the window controls. You can see it's still very nice uh, with these very solidly built interior of the classic cars. So you got seat heating over here, six levels of seat heating. So that's something that we don't really use, but in the UK it might make sense in winter. Everything is just enveloped in leather over here so imagine the amount of cattle they slaughtered in order <laughs> to make this car like the entire interior including the roof lining the b pillars no the a pillar and the c pillar everything is completely wrapped in leather now being a super gt this button over here activates all four windows and you can see yes this is a true Super GT with the lack of a B pillar and such a nice window frame. So that's interesting. You can activate all four at once or individually. And for the as for the back passengers, you can activate seat heating as well as the windows over here. Oh no, this is the seat. Uh, there's a button somewhere over there. Ah, uh, damn it. Mm. Yeah, there you go. At the side, there is the window controls for the rear passengers. Something interesting uh, is if you want your passengers to smoke, this is actually a Bentley ashtray and this is a cigarette lighter as well. So, this car comes with a smoking package, the Bentley smoking package, where you can toss your ash over here and your cigarette or more likely cigar butts over there and this can just be removed cleaned put back in and stored over here yep so that is the bentley brooklands <sighs> it feels like i'm in a museum man it totally just feels like you're in a museum this is something very very strange hmm yep this is very strange. This is a collector's, a true Bentley collector's item. Where so limited amounts of this car were produced, I highly doubt that anyone that buys this car will use it as a daily car. It's much more the case that if you're a Bentley fan or occasionally go to a car show, this is yeah more fitting of that category than a daily beater. And of course, 6.75 
liters in Malaysia that is a painful amount of road tax not that people who can afford this car care about the road tax and it's just very very a thirsty car right twin turbocharged 6.75 liters producing 530 horsepower 1050 newton meters of torque that is insane amounts of stuff <laughs> <laughs> this guy is a museum, a Bentley museum. And of course, oh, you get the. Yeah, don't ignore this uh, for now, we're gonna get that fixed. Because uh, the customer has left this car for us to sell on consignment basis. Okay, you get the very analog uh, uh, speedometer and RPM counter over there. And this is the trip reset. It doesn't have enough electronics to show you how much the car is going in terms of uh, your miles per gallon or your km per liter yeah it doesn't have that yet i don't know why but yeah it it doesn't okay but you but you do use this occasionally for trip uh counting measurements and stuff okay yeah so there you go that is the bentley brooklyn's i am kind of in awe and kind of perplexed at the same time about this car yep um, I'm just gonna leave it at that all right guys thank you so much for watching this Bentley Brooklyn's walk around I'd like to show you around this weird ass car this is super weird unicorn like true unicorn kind of car all right guys cheers See, so quiet. It doesn't start up like an SVR or anything. You know? It doesn't start up like a crazy modern sports car where it's trying to be loud and capture attention. It's just very, very stately, very, very calm, and just elegantly, for such a monstrous package and engine, just elegantly glide and flow and, and just like very chill moving itself you know see you can't even hear it there's no sound there's no sound from a 6.75 liter engine there's no sound this is the strangest freaking thing ah weird cars man